Hi everyone, welcome back to the EV Puzzle. Um, today I wanted to do an update on my solar array that I've stuck on the roof. Back in January this year, 2019, I put a 3.9 kilowatt P, that's the peak output, 3.9 kilowatts worth of solar panels on my roof. They were um, JA Solar 280 watt panels, 14 of them, and here they are. Um, all black, um, I don't think they look too bad on the roof, so I'm quite happy with them there. The inverter that we're using is a Solus 3.6 kilowatt. Now I know this is all techie stuff, but just to get it out of the way so you understand what we're actually using. 3.6 kilowatt inverter means that I'm not getting the full 3.9 kilowatts from the solar panel. Why did I go for that system in the first place? Well, let me give you a little bit of background. I decided that I was going to go from a diesel economical Fiesta and my next car needed to be more economical. I wanted to go electric. So I was going to increase my electricity usage. I was already using about 3,000 units of electricity a year. Um, so I was estimating four miles per kilowatt hour, 12,000 miles a year, another 3,000 kilowatt hours. So I was gonna double my consumption of uh, electricity. My thought was um, rather than increasing prices of electricity and year on year it getting worse, if I install solar panels, then not only can I reduce the cost of both my fuel for my car and the cost of running the house, I can also prevent cost increases in the future from electricity increases. Now whether they go up or down, some people say they're going to go down because we're going to be using cheaper renewables. Some people are going to say they're going to be going up because we're going to pay for the greater infrastructure. Whichever it is, I'm protected. Free is free and free will be free in 10 years time. So that's the idea. Hedge my bets against the prices in the future. Invest by putting some equipment on the roof now. For the next 10, 20 years time, I will have cheaper bills. So in my pension, in my retirement, I will be spending money not on household bills, but going out, eating, having a pint down the pub, um, going on day trips out, hotel trips, bed and breakfasts, holidays, whatever I feel like doing, which is better than spending it on utility bills. Now, as I said, I was using about 3,000 units a year. I was going to add another 3,000, that's six. And yet the 3.9 kilowatt system that I've put on the roof, that's estimated to generate 3,700 units a year. So that's covering a bit more than half of my intended usage. And I'm also going to add to my usage heating my hot water. So it's less than half is what I'm actually um, potentially going to gain from putting the solar system on. So why did I go for such a small system? Well, it was to do with um, the size of the roof, how many panels I could get on, and also what um, efficiency of the panels that I could get up there. So I could have gone for more and I could have gone for higher wattage panels, but instead of being an under £5,000 investment to get the solar panels, I might have been spending six or eight thousand pounds and that extra investment to get that extra piece of um, generation just didn't seem to financially make sense to me but in hindsight looking back I wish I'd have put more panels up if you're thinking of doing it don't hold back go for as many as you can as much as you can because the more energy you have you'll use it and you'll benefit from it so in my opinion don't skimp don't do what I did go for it so what's it actually been like having the solar panels? Well, for me, I'm a numbers person. I'm a logic person. I like to be efficient. So it's keeping me occupied. It's great fun trying to work out um, when you're using the solar, how to optimize it, how to reduce your um, kilowatts from the grid as much as possible and trying to use as much of the solar power as you can. So I sort of love that, but I see that as a... Um, interim period you know, my first year of using it I'm learning it understanding it having fun with it it'll settle down and I'll forget about it I won't be playing with it as much and worrying about um, how to be efficient how not to be efficient the least I've ever used for a single day so far is 0.7 something 0.8 something of a kilowatt hour for the entire 24 hour day so less than one unit of electricity so that's about 10 pence 10 pence worth of electricity it's probably best if I walk you through some graphs now to understand what my usage was and what it is now and how I'm making use of this solar PV system that's generating 3,700 units of electricity for me. What difference does that make and what can it do? This is probably the key chart for me. Um, it shows my energy consumption from the meter 
So how many units of grid electricity am I using in blue? You can see previously I was using 200 a month or so back in 2018. In summer it drops. Then when I get the Kona EV, it goes up quite a lot. And then as soon as solar is installed in January 2019, it comes down. And then as soon as we hit April, May and June, it's coming down significantly. The green line is showing the solar generation. So you can see I'm generating much more than I'm actually consuming. The purple color is my EV charging. The red color is hot water, which I'm estimating. I don't have a meter on that. So I'm estimating how many hours of a three kilowatt hour immersion I'm using. So that, that isn't uh, necessarily accurate. And then the purple is the combination of the water and the EV. So it's not an additional uh, unit. This chart is a graph I started collecting in April, so April, May and June's data, and it's basically showing daily consumption, so daily uh, grid energy units. And what you can see is the black lines, the average that I'm using, just over two. But you can see some days, you know, I'm spiking four, six, eight uh, kilowatt hours for a day. It's quite a lot, but other days I'm down sub one. Now we're getting into June as well. What I find useful about tracking this data on a daily basis, just for these few initial months, is that I actually understand now where the energy is being used. So on a day where I've used only one or two kilowatt hours, I know what I haven't done and what I haven't used. And on a day where I've consumed six or eight units of electricity, I know how busy we were cooking, baking, washing, and all those sort of things. So I do understand where the energy is being used. So this is part of the estimate that Eon Energy provided me with to consider going solar. They were saying that without solar, I would be spending about £405 a year on electricity. And with solar, with the 3.9 kilowatt P, it'd be down to £15 a year. That sounds wrong, actually, because actually, according to the number of units that I'm using, between two and three a day, it should come to about 115 So maybe it's a typo. Maybe there's £100 missing. So this chart is my solar generation chart. It's coming from the Solus uh, inverter, and you can see in February, 282 kilowatt hours. March, 380 kilowatt hours. So winter, you know, I'm not generating much more than what I'm gonna consume in total in the house. So winter, yeah, I'm gonna struggle to charge the car. But since we get to April, 512 kilowatt hours, and remember, that's only a 30 day period. And then May, uh, 533 kilowatt hours, my record so far, a very productive month. And June just crept into the 500 kilowatt hours. But again, that's a 30 day month. So overall, maybe April was actually the best solar month on average per day. What I'm doing to make sense of these months is looking at the number of days that I'm generating more than 20 kilowatt hours. So here you can see there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's 10 days in June that I generated more than 20 kilowatt hours. And under 10 kilowatt hours, one, two, three, four, five, six. So it's 10 and six for June. So in May, yeah, there was four days where I was generating more than 28 kilowatt hours, which is the best I've ever received so far with the system. But if you add up the number of days, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine days over 20 kilowatt hours, and how many under 10? One, two, three, four. So fewer days uh, under 10 kilowatt hours, a fewer really dull days, and one less day of really peak energy. And April, the surprising month, 512 kilowatt hours in what I would have thought would have been a dull rainy month. But no, 14 days uh, of over 20 kilowatt hours, so 14 really sunny days and only seven exceptionally dull days generating under 10 kilowatt hours. This chart is a useful example of a typical day for me. So this comes from the app on the MyEnergy Zappi um, application on my mobile phone. In green, it's showing consumed units of electricity. Yeah, the green being good, so that's solar generated, and the red being it's pulled from the grid. In yellow, it's showing where I'm exporting to the grid. So you can see, right at the start of the day, I was charging the car, a huge chunk of green. Then the car was full at 100%, so it stopped completely, and I started exporting to the grid. Then I turned the immersion heater on, and that's where I started using the solar energy with the little top-up from the grid, because it's a three kilowatt fixed immersion heater. But that's a good example, that I'm charging the car, and heating hot water, and I'm still exporting some energy. If I had a battery storage system, then that yellow exported energy would be saved into a battery, and then I wouldn't have used any energy from the grid when I turned the immersion heater on.
And if you look at an entire week's worth of um, charging and export data from the My Energy app, then you can see that the green spikes are me charging the car. The green with red on top is me heating my hot water. I have a fixed three kilowatt immersion heater. So if the sun's only giving me 1.5 kilowatts, I'm gaining half solar and half from the grid. But you can see I'm still exporting a fair bit of energy. I would benefit slightly from a home storage battery system. And finally, what I find useful from this chart from my energy isn't the actual numbers because they're actually incorrect at the moment, but it's the ratio, the difference between generation and export. Uh, I'm still exporting something like 25 to 30, 35% of what I'm generating. I'm exporting a lot of energy. So for me, if I did have a home storage battery, I could utilize 20 or 30% more during these peak months where I'm actually generating quite a lot, maybe not in the winter. What I can take as a summary from all of this analysis is from April onwards, I can definitely charge my Kona Electric and drive on pure solar energy for around 900 miles a month. And I can heat my hot water, 170 litre tank, and I can also generate enough electricity to power the house. Apart from, I am using from the grid around two to three units of electricity a day. I think that's a pretty good job from a 3.9 kilowatt P system. As always, thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, and if you haven't, go on, click the subscribe button, click the like for the video if you did enjoy it, and uh, as soon as I upload any more videos, if you've clicked the notification bell, it'll tell you that I've done it. If you're interested in solar or electric cars, come back, see some more videos. Thanks for watching, and see you again soon. Bye-bye.